Hello and welcome to a long overdue episode of Jurassic Reviews. On this episode, we begin our look at Kenner's 1997 toy line for the film The Lost World Jurassic Park. This was the toy line that really got me into collecting Jurassic Park toys. And the movie, while divisive among the community, is tied with the original for being one of my favorite films. In fact, I think I've probably watched The Lost World more overall. I did a vote months ago between a few figures from this line on which I should start with and the vote overwhelmingly went this figure's way. I think it's a fitting figure to start with, since I started a similar way for the first villain's toy line. So for this video, we are taking a look at the Lost World Bull T-Rex. This figure was released in 1997 for $29.99. Here's a few shots of the box that it came in. Notably, this line would do away with the collector's cards found in the first film's line. This T-Rex stands around 9 inches tall, and is about 24 inches long from head to tail. This would be the largest dinosaur in a Jurassic line until the release of the Brachiosaurus in Mattel's Legacy Collection over 20 years later. I have a few of them in my collection, and they all sort of have this lean to them. Most stand okay, but for this review I'm going to use a stand here to keep them more upright. Before we begin looking at the sculpt, I'd like to briefly touch on the history of this figure, as its first release wasn't supposed to be for The Lost World, and instead Kenner's Jurassic Park Series 2 line as the Gulper T-Rex. This cancelled figure featured a different paint job and eyes, and I don't believe it included any of the electronic features like the Lost World version. It also would come with a collector's card, which is, again, something that was removed from the Lost World toys. It's unfortunate that the Gulper T-Rex would not see a release, but luckily we did end up seeing this sculpt for the Lost World, which itself would end up having a repaint and a retool, which we'll touch on later. Now let's take a look at the sculpt. This T-Rex features the soft rubber material found on many of Kenner's larger dinosaurs, to give it that real feeling skin that they were going for. This one feels a little different from the ones from the first film as it feels a little tougher. Like I mentioned before, my figures don't stand upright very well. It's common for the legs on these things to bend inwards over time. The legs are not the same rubber material that's on the body, they are harder plastic, and I think the weight in the rubber creates issues and causes them to bend inward. I never owned this figure as a kid, instead having the Thrasher T-Rex from the same line, but I would always see pictures of it on the back of the box of other figures and be in awe of it. Despite its proportions being really off, with its head and neck being huge to work for its action feature, it's still a really impressive looking toy. The eyes are one of the main things that stand out to me, which are really large and feature this plastic lens that gives them a real striking appearance. Details all over the figure are solid, all the little scales and wrinkles in the skin look great, and you can even see little bumps in areas as well. The head in particular has some really nice detail. Some of the teeth are actually chipped and broken, which is a nice touch. Now let's move on to the paint. The majority of the figure is painted turquoise, but there is also black, white, and brown throughout the body. It's a really cool looking paint job, with the stripe pattern going down its back being the standout part. There's also some black stripes on both legs, and the legs themselves are painted brown. It's on the right leg we'll find the JP mark, which now features the Site V stamp. 
This one's number is 28. The white paint on this figure is found under its neck, belly, and tail. The tail nails are painted black, and the fingernails are left brown like the majority of both arms. Moving to the head, you'll find its white teeth and pink gums and tongue. Its eyes are green with black pupils. There's also some black paint around the eyes that help the eyes pop even more. As far as articulation, this figure is pretty limited, with only movable joints at the arms. This figure has both electronics and an action feature. The electronics feature three different roars that are activated by pressing a button on its back. Two are roars and one is a biting or chewing sound. The action feature is pretty great. The inside of the mouth has a wide opening, so this figure can essentially eat small dinosaurs and humans in this line. And there's an opening on the belly to retrieve whatever you put in. There's even an included human with this T-Rex, who is in a protective survival pod. This human is pretty weird looking, and is not based on any human from the film. The survival pod can easily go down the T-Rex's throat, but it also features these blades that can be extended to prevent that. The human inside cannot be removed, so no other figures can be put inside. This type of action feature would appear in other toy lines, like the Ultimate Godzilla 1998, and it would reappear in Mattel's Jurassic World toy line with the Super Colossal figures. The first repaint of this figure would appear a year later, in the Chaos Effect line as the Omega T-Rex. This figure features a drastically different paint job, now being mainly orange. The Chaos Effect line was known for its crazy paint schemes, and this figure is no exception. It's weird looking to say the least, with this crazy display of black stripes. There's also blue paint that appears around these stripes, and on its neck and arms. The head has both black paint and purple paint. There's also white teeth and purple gums. This figure would also include a human in a survival pod, except with a different paint job. Overall, I prefer the paint job of the Lost World version a lot more, but this is still a cool looking figure, though a much harder to find one. There would be a retool of this figure over a decade later in the 2009 Toys R Us exclusive line. This figure pretty much has the same sculpt, but the action feature is removed, and the rubber skin changed to mostly a harder plastic on the body. This figure is different enough that I plan on doing a separate review of it later on. I am just going to focus on the Lost World and Chaos Effect versions from here on out. In terms of rarity, the Lost World version is not too hard to come by, with loose samples going anywhere between $50 to $100, sometimes more depending on the condition and if it has a survival pod included. Box versions go for much higher. I see them sell mostly in the $5 to $600 range. The Omega T-Rex, on the other hand, is much more difficult to find, and might be just as rare as the Series 2 Carnotaurus. Loose samples can be found between $150 to $200, and mint and box versions have sold for over $1,000 in the past. As always, these prices are not official. You can always find them for more or less. Before I give my rating for this figure, here's a comparison with other figures. Here it is with a Kenner 4-inch human and a Mattel 3 and 3 quarter scale human. Here it is with the Velociraptor. Here it is with the Spinosaurus. And finally, here it is with the Stegosaurus. For a rating out of 10, I give the Lost World version a 9, and the Chaos Effect version an 8. This is a classic Jurassic Park toy, one that I think all collectors should go after. 
The Lost World version is still quite easy to find on places like eBay, much more so than the Chaos Effect version. I prefer the Lost World paint job much more than the Chaos Effect version, so unless you are a completionist, I think going after the Lost World Bull T-Rex is a better option. Its paint job and action features are solid, and its massive size make it an awesome display piece. There are issues with the T-Rex standing, it sort of varies from figure to figure, but overall I recommend it. It's worth hunting down. And that does it for Kenner's Lost World Bull T-Rex. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.